In the book of Acts, chapter 3, uh, we read that after the beautiful experience, the powerful experience of Pentecost, and the, the, the disciples, apostles, the followers who were united in prayer, they received the power of the Holy Spirit. And then after that, I'm sure you remember Peter's very famous uh, sermon that he preached in the Bible says that about uh, 3,000 souls were added to this newborn church. And then right after that says that Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour to pray. And then the Bible brings another character into the, into the picture, into the story, that it's about a lame man, someone who was born with, um, with some disabilities from birth, the Bible says. And so daily they would carry him to the temple. They would uh, place him by this uh, temple entrance, uh, a gate that is called uh, the gate beautiful. And I don't want to get into like all the details because it'll take me forever. It's good to know why is it called that way, how many entrances there are, things like that. But just, just to give you an overview, uh, as someone with all these disabilities is placed at a gate called beautiful to beg in order to survive. Someone who's a beggar. And, and every single day he would stay there. And when people are coming in through the gates beautiful to the temple for the hour of prayer, he would just stare at them to see if there is extra food he can ask for, a few pennies, whatever he can get just to survive. And then we read that John and Peter are coming. And then all of a sudden he sees them and he starts asking them for alms, for, for some help. But it's interesting how when Peter and John look at him, they tell him, look at, uh, look, look at me, look, look at me in the eyes instead of my hands. It's not about what I have to give you, but when you look at me, I can give you whom you need, not what you need. It's a change of perspective in his history because I may give you a little bit more of what I have, but tomorrow you'll be in the place, same place asking for the same thing. But our faith is different. Our faith is not just there to help your day a little bit better. It's there to change your life. That's what we can offer you as Christians. Not to make your everyday burdens a little bit lighter, but to give you the good news of eternal salvation, Jesus Christ, the joy of your salvation, that will change your entire journey. Entire meaning all the way to eternity. And so as there's that conversation going on, we, we read this very, very famous declaration of Peter. He says in, in, in Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. They took him from the right hand and helped him. They taught him all of a sudden to walk. And then we read in um, Acts chapter 3 verse 8 that, So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them. Finally. Every day of his life coming and staying at the gate but never having the opportunity of entering the temple, that terrorizes me, that's scary. And this, when I read that, that caught all my attention that finally this person entered the temple. How? Walking, jumping, and praising God. You know, this, this makes me think of people who seem to have a different perspective when they enter into a, a holy sanctuary, a place of worship that you can see from the way they, they praise, the way they talk, the way they pray, it's different. And when you talk to them, you hear their testimony, they tell you for how many years uh, they, would, they would come, but, but stay at the gates of the temple. They, they would always imagine, I wonder what happens in there. That's for the holy people. That's for the healthy people. That's for the good people, and not me. But the miracle is that uh, as soon as he enters there, finally enter the gate. So there he is, jumping, praising, and walking. Why am I saying this? Because 
maybe some of you or someone you know, who comes to church, who goes to church, but the closest he or she gets is a door. And that person does not get to experience a full spiritual experience in God's presence. We become beggars. I'll just go and hopefully God will give you more, uh, a little more, or someone will help me. We become beggars when the God of all creation has given us all in plenty. If we could only enter the temple, enter his presence to enjoy him. So that's what I'm inviting you to do. All right, don't, don't just become a beggar coming to a, a place of worship. No. Enter into his gates with, with worship and praise, and you're going to have all things in abundance. God bless you.